Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a really fun, wavy, summery beach design. I'm working with a 20 ounce traditional from Craft Haven today and I've already sanded to prep and taped off my bottom. If you don't want to tape off your bottom, you can go ahead and skip that step. We're spray painting our base colors in a swirl kind of design. I'm using Rust-Oleum's Sandro Pay and Rust-Oleum's Deep Blue. Once I've got the main color of my swirl down, I'm filling in with a darker blue paint, and then I just kind of clean up the details here and there after I get the two main swirl lines going. Remember when you're spray painting swirls to do short, quick sweeping motions of your paint, and you wanna be at least 12 inches away from your cup to avoid any kind of drips. Also, make sure that you shake both of your paint cans for at least a minute each to make sure you get everything mixed in well so we don't clog those nozzles and we don't get any kind of weird ketones sitting at the surface of our paint. After I'm done with my swirl, I'm gonna let this fully dry to the touch before we move on to the next step. It's really warm in my shop right now, so that only took about 20 to 30 minutes. Next, we're gonna do the colorants in what will be like the water, I guess, of this design. I've mixed about 60 milliliters of epoxy. I'm probably not going to use it all, but I'm dividing it into two smaller medicine cups. And I'm using these really cool Mind Glown Glowing Mica Pigments from Black Bear Glitters. I will have them linked down below. These are the prettiest, glowiest mica powders I've ever used. They glow in color in the dark after you've activated them in the light or with like a UV light. I'm using a little over a pea-sized amount for each color. I will list the colors that I use down below because I don't really remember what their names are. And once I've got the pigments mixed in all the way, I'm going to just finger paint them on. So starting with the darkest color first, I'm going to fill in the base painted darker sections and then I'll move on to the lighter color with a different finger of my glove and just kind of mix them in together a little bit for this really pretty organic wavy looking look until my whole cup is coated. Might take a little finessing, <laughs> okay? Uh, I am using a regular speed setting epoxy. I'm not going to use a fast set for this because I need a little more working time with what I'm doing here. Once I got everything coated, I'm just going to hit it with my torch really quick to pop any bubbles. And then I came back after about 15 minutes to remove my tape from the bottom. I let that dry for about six to eight hours before moving on to the next step. Remember your dry times may vary based on the type and brand of epoxy that you're using. You'll notice here that I'm replacing my tape down at the bottom. If you're not taping off the bottom of your cups, you can skip that step altogether. And I've got 30 milliliters of epoxy mixed. Again, I am going to use our Artist Cure Epoxy for this because I do not want a fast setting epoxy for this technique because it's going to cure faster than I need it to to achieve the results that we're after. When I'm applying this coat of epoxy, I want it to be thick enough to where my finger can freely glide over the cup without feeling the hard surface of the cup through my glove. So we should be able to glide nice and freely, so not too thick, not too thin, but somewhere right in the middle. After I've applied that, I should have somewhere between 10 and 15 milliliters of epoxy left in my medicine cup. And to that, I'm gonna add one to two drops of Illumilite's white epoxy dye and about five drops of white alcohol ink. I'm gonna mix that together and I'm gonna set a timer on my phone for about 35 minutes and I'm going to walk away. <laughs> you might be thinking to yourself, why would you do that? Well, when we apply the waves, we want this coat of epoxy to be just towards the end of its pot life. We wanna to come to the very end of the working time so that when we go to apply the waves and we get the movement and cells that we're after, they're gonna lock into place. The sooner in the process that we do that, the more time those waves have to move around and the cells and the lacing that we get are going to dissipate. 
So if you've been working with your artist cure formula for a while or whatever kind of regular curing epoxy that you have, try to note when you get to the end of that working time, when it starts to get just a little tacky. That's the sweet spot for laying down these waves. So here we are, my cup has been turning for 35 minutes or so with just the clear epoxy on it, and I'm coming back to apply that white epoxy dye. Using my metal stir stick, I'm gonna just drizzle these random wavy lines here and there on my cup. We don't wanna pour it, we want a very smooth drizzle. Next, I'm gonna stop my turner and using my heat gun with a directional nozzle attached that comes with this particular heat gun, which I will link down below, on the high heat setting, on the highest blow setting, we're gonna hold our heat gun kind of horizontal against the cup and blow at the side of our waves to get that movement. If you're not getting the movement that you want, move on to the next line and you can come back to that one later. And the reason we want that tapered directional nozzle is it's going to concentrate the air for maximum airflow to get the most movement out of our epoxy in a very short period of time, thus not to scorch our epoxy and get it too hot. So you'll see that I'm trying to work very quickly here because we are stopping the turner, so we will get some movement that we're not too thrilled with because it's it's sitting for a little bit, right? And we need to have that turner in constant motion. So you really have to work quick. I can imagine that doing this technique with just waves horizontal around a like traditional beach scene would probably be easier than doing them all the way vertically across the cup. But I think this is just such a cool technique. And when I showed my friend, he was like, I think this would be such a great cup idea for like a more masculine design because you don't have any of the glitter or the frillies or anything. It's just a more basic kind of understated design. And I think he's right. And my husband likes it too. So, hey. <laughs> Once I've fanned out all of my wavy lines, I'm then going to go through with a gloved hand and just kind of clean up any kind of spots that might have gotten oopy gloopy or drifted down where I didn't want them to. Uh, because we have that clear layer of epoxy underneath that we applied earlier, we are able to just scoop out any kind of unmentionables <laughs> that we don't like. I let this turn for about six to eight hours before we moved on to the next step. So here's what we've got so far. I'm ready to start on my regular sanding routine, which is really just sanding along that top rim to expose a fine line of stainless steel. This fine line of stainless steel is where our final coats of epoxy will adhere to to create the final seal for our tumbler on the outer rim rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. Once I'm done with my sanding, I'm gonna go around and clean it up with some paper towels and rubbing alcohol. And now I'm ready to apply my decals. For my decal today, I'm using this really cute design that I found on Etsy that says happiness comes in waves. I cut it with the three different colors and then I also created an offset around it with white vinyl. All the vinyl that I'm using with the exception of the white are from Sicer, it's their pressure sensitive vinyl I think it's called I don't know but I just really love the colors of their vinyl uh, and the transfer tape that I'm using is the same one that I always use I will link all of it in the description box along with that design so to layer my vinyl I'm going to first start by just layering the words over the offset layer and then I'll apply that to my cup using the hinge method like I normally would once I get the largest section applied to the cup, I will then hand place and kind of eyeball out the blue wave and the sunshine section just because I think it's easier to layer those smaller parts once it's already on the cup. Now that we're done with our decal, I'm ready to move on to my final coats of epoxy. For my final coat, I'm just using 30 milliliters of our Flynn Sisters Supply Shop Artist Cure Formula. 
and I'm applying it like I normally would. You'll notice for this final coat, I left the tape off the bottom. That's because I'm going to bring these final coats just over that tape line that we established during our colorants and design. And that overlap of the clear final coat is what's going to seal it around the bottom. Any kind of excess epoxy that I get on the very bottom of the cup, I just wipe up with some alcohol and a paper towel and call it a day. Uh, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this design. I think it's so fun and simple for summer. Let me show you what these pigments look like in the dark so that you can see how mind glowing these mind glown pigments from Black Bear Glitters are. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.